Morissette and Missy Jovi. Corey Kelly from Virginia, originally a city rat in New York City, found the mountains, downhill mountain bike racer. Missy is only one of the small number of professional riders, but she represents what the rest of us would love to have, a life dedicated to riding. It's not always an easy ride, but in the case of Missy, it will always be interesting. The one thing Missy can do faster than talk is ride. First impression of Missy would be like uh, taking LSD and having a Jackson Pollock painting come at you at 100 miles an hour and hit you right in the face. Missy Giovi is like a bag of kittens. You just never know what's gonna jump out at you, you know? Yeah, she, uh, that girl has a lust for life uh, that few people have. Um, in terms of personalities, I don't think there was another personality that could have been more memorable than Missy. If it wasn't for my wife, I would probably be eating bananas out of trees and like in some country, walking around barefoot, biking, yeah, do that. He just had a fucking like, bug the size of a fucking minivan land on his head. Probably would never see me again if it wasn't for her. <laughs> Not in a bad way, I'd just be like hanging out in some borio in Brazil, you know, with the people. Living life with the people, the street people. Kind of a street kid. My whole bad side of the family was from the city. I was infatuated with mountains and shit, you know, infatuated. Like I knew about the Dolomite mountain range when I was like fourth grade. I mean, you know, from a city kid, I'd stand on top of the apartment buildings. We played in the apartment buildings a lot until the city closed down, like five o'clock business, so that we can go skate at like the banks where the marble is, and then we don't gotta deal with like the real cops, we just gotta deal with the fucking security bullshit, you know, which was like just fucking ignore the guy and throw a donut at him if he doesn't like us. It was just, we didn't have anywhere to fucking go, you know? My grandparents lived in Vermont, so once a year I got to leave buildings, they didn't have skate parks, there was no fucking downhill parks, there was no, oh, you know, mommy take me here, you know, type shit. So it was just really just like finding fun however you did it. But my saving grace was that my parents once a year brought me to Vermont, which I was super stoked on. I got to go ski. And then finally when I was like 14, I was like, told my parents, I'm sick of this bullshit, I can't deal with all these like apartments. I'm going up to granny and grandparents. And they're like, well, how are you getting up there? I was like, I'll find my way. I think I biked up. Once I got up there, it was like, you could mow lawns and people could pay you money. There was a lawn to mow. The city was hard, you know, as a kid. It was city, you always had to do illegal shit. If you didn't have money, you'd have to do illegal shit to get money. There was no really access for us to like, or do errands for people, you know. Hey kid, you know, here, you know, delivering packages. Who knows what the fuck I delivered? I was young age. The ski coach found me and he said, come here at 6 a.m. Became like such a good ski tuner and skier. I was supposed to go to my first semester of college and had a scholarship for ski racing and just decided I wasn't ready to go yet. So I hitchhiked out to Durango, Colorado where the 1990 World Championships were. And I was hitchhiking like that and I said, going to Worlds. And I put a sign in the back of my backpack and I like went on the highway. And these mountain bikers that were going to the World Championships, he was driving like a maniac and pulled over and picked me up. And then I got there. Didn't know anybody there. Didn't know a single person there. Like didn't know anybody. So I just took my tent and just went camping and just camped there. And I camped out like where all the riders were. They I saw their condos and I like made this cool tree fort. And I camped out in the woods up there. I had like the Kmart's but budget like Star Wars sleeping bag. Okay, we're not talking like North Face Down. Okay, we're talking like the Star Wars. You know, I can't even remember who was on. I think it was, it was like Star Wars was like on one side and like E.T. was on the other. All right, it was like on sale. It was like riding around in the morning trying to get a license or whatever to race the race. And I think I had like Star Wars figures and shit or something like in my hair and little rubber frog and being a maniac. And um, Charlie Litsky like saw me riding. So I was like just riding down like mountain and crashing and having fun. and. The dude saw me and drug me over to John Parker's pit at the World Championships and said, you need to sponsor her. The skinny little twig spitting and cussing up a storm showed up at our condo at, in Purgatory. We had a bike for her. So I was automatically riding with these big wigs like John Tomac and Julie Furtado and Joey Irwin at that race who had already been, and I was just kind of like, the gnome who like walked out of the woods. <laughs> no one knew what the heck she was talking about or could barely even understand her. And uh, of the, you know, of the many races who sat there listening to her, you know, the machine gun fire. They were like, here, try this, a full rigid. 
It was a renegade team, yeah. I was, uh, I got in trouble all the time for being loud. And so like the first night on the team, I think I was playing strip poker. They decided that wherever we were gonna stay somewhere that I got the balcony. It's cool, I never even had a key to get in and out. So if I wanted to go in in the condo, I had to find a way at night to climb up. I was the dog of the team. I was on the porch. It was good like that. I enjoyed it like that. I liked the freedom of that. You know, I didn't want to have a key. That was like too tame for me, so. I think back and just say, you know, I was on the world's podium. I'm like, I started all this in a tent in Durango, Colorado, freezing my ass off my Star Wars ET sleeping bag. I don't think I would have had an adventure like that if like my parents drove me places. So. Thanks, thanks mom, thanks dad for, you know, just being party people and being too drunk to drive me somewhere. <laughs> Cause I found my own way, my own way was better. My own way found me here, you know, with my family, my mountain bike family. And they're a bunch of kooks, I love them. I'm like getting back in touch with them, been kind of stuck in a state for like, you know, seven years and they let me out. <laughs> so I'm able to be a little bit more adventurous again, you know, and leave my 33 mile radius area. I'm thankful for that. Oh, I remember mad rides in this bike. <laughs> Mad, mad awesome tricks. This bike was actually pretty sick at the time. It was cool to go downhill on it or cross country because she had all the chain rings. Pretty capable, like insane rides, rode all over Colorado, every mountaintop. Didn't notice that we stick to trails. She's been through a lot. She's got some dents on her and um, everywhere from Utah and trails out in the East Coast, up in Maine, to Canada, to France. She's been through a lot. <laughs> She's a tough bitch. <laughs> FTW welded this thing right because, you know, we didn't get 10 bikes back in the day. You got a bike, you know what I mean? Don't lose it, don't pawn it, which I did and got it out a few times. <laughs> it didn't break. So yeah, she's been through a lot of good memories on this. Lots of wildflowers, places like this, you know? I want some nationals on this bike. I'm not too attached to like winning shit, so I can't exactly tell you. But I did win a few World Cups on this bike and um, a few others that I made it down. Whatever I made it to the bottom of. These were a freaking sponsor item that I hated. And anytime that, as soon as I walked out of the pit, these bitches came off. I was like, I don't want these tree horns. Shit was harder back then, you know? In my opinion, the downhillers are what started trail building because we didn't want to kill hikers with dogs and people came up the same shit we wanted to come down and it wasn't gnar enough too you know so we started building Missy Giovi coming down uh, with that flat tire folks put your hands together for the Missy's determination has shown through at races where she finished not just on flat tires but on bare wheel rims with broken bones and bleeding call it determination or just plain crazy. There's something about the mentality of some downhill racers that won't allow them to slow down. I like to put my 100% effort into like every fucking section because that's how I like to ride. I don't like to like, oh, I'm gonna save it. You know, what happens after this turn is really not the way I ride. I just kind of like to just like wide open and I just, I enjoy that. So that's how I rode. I don't think people wanted to see it any different. I think if you watch my race run, I gave you what I came for. My dad was like a business guy. I don't know, he liked winning it, he liked gambling. <laughs> he, was, he was a good professional gambler, like a fucking serious savant mathematician. I inherited his skills, but I put it to use for number crunching while I downhill and ski and snowboard. I like to gamble with my life. I learned to get back on my bike racing with the wind knocked out of you, which is really fucking a scary thing to do. He's nailing it. Oh. Oh. All right. But when you get through it, it's pretty cool, you know, because most of the time you're panicking, you're like, I'm gonna die, you're on all fours. But I was like, oh, I'm fine. Oh, I got this shit. So it was pretty fun. <laughs> she pretty much threw caution to the wind and rode um, on instinct and did some crazy shit, <laughs> you know, I just. And that was Missy, it was just awesome. And then, you know, she took that same on the track and failed the world championship. I mean, just with that crappy head shock fork, just, I mean, just fearless. She was just fearless. And the, the passion and the fearlessness together combined for something that just blew. I mean, the tradition, all the other girls were just like, you know, like almost the same way Furtado was. You know, you're just like, oh my God. Just this package of just womanhood, which is forceful, strong, and, with, and just with the purpose of winning. Fabulous. Yeah. I, I was in shock. Like, this, this girl was a rock star all over the world. These hordes of 
of people were like, you know, just stalking us all over the town in an effort to like see this person, Missy Giovi, and her freaking dried piranha around her neck. I think Missy Giovi is synonymous with the golden era of mountain biking and has a uh, mystique that um, is pretty much unparalleled. I love nature and I love mountain biking, so I'm like really happy to be a part of this family and stay around, you know, and take people on some cool adventures and shit. Like, that's like one of the things I want to do, you know? Like show people all kinds of life and just celebrate life with them and spread the love and that kind of shit, you know? Have a good time and enjoy this like beautiful place that we have here. Everybody's waiting to get to heaven, but I mean, this is heaven, you know? You just gotta make it that, you know what I mean? Gotta make it less shitty. Plus the federal government tracks me. <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm still a number right now, they own me. <laughs> I got like six more months and then I could really disappear if I want to, but again, I won't. <laughs> I point to that direction, that's the life. <laughs> I love scaring myself. I have a good time doing that. I, that brings me much happiness. I, other people probably don't want that, you know what I mean? If you don't want, it, if you don't want that, don't be a fly that gets in my helmet. <laughs> because I'm gonna take you through the weeds. Now, but the one thing that my dad told me that was probably, he's a really fucking real person, thanks Benny. You know, and my mom too, but the, like the one real thing was like, you know, he told me, you know, like, after a bad day, I think I had the fuck beat out of me, you know, by some kids, and he told me, you know, you gotta make the best every day, you know, because, you know, life can be really, really hard, you know, so, like, every moment that you can make a better moment, make it a good moment, because you may not get anything else. I mean, you know, I, I grew up in a place where, you know, I may not get anything else but a shit day, ever, my whole life, every day a shit day, so I had to make the best of a shit day, and I did, yo. I made every day a fucking good day, even the shitty ones. So, I wanna help people do that, man. Come hang out with me. We'll make the shitty times good. The thing I think about Missy was when uh, she was in Volvo Cannondale and just the superstar that she deserved to be. And uh, it was at Mount Snow, and so, you know, if you're the superstar at uh, Volvo Cannondale, guess what, you got a free Volvo station wagon. The car had like 500 miles on it, I swear to God to you. And Missy just fucking rolled this Volvo, it was like a fancy Volvo station wagon with the, the tail lights on it. I didn't even have my seatbelt on. I almost killed myself. Uh, the airbags, of course, imploded, and I was like, I was blown out the back window without my shoes on. I had a pretty good head injury, broken wrist. I raced the next day, and there was raspberry jelly all over me, and I thought it was blood, I was bleeding to death. I was like, oh my God. And it was like, Oh yeah, this family of deer jumped out on me and we're like, we're all as grown up, we're all standing and sitting there thinking like, Missy, what do you take us for? A bunch of fucking food. I don't know, I might have seen a deer, I'm not sure. <laughs> I didn't get arrested, they let me race, that's all I gotta say. But the car was fucking done. <laughs>